Hey all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren, of course, and today I'm gonna smoke a pastrami. Got some uh, beef belly here that I have cured. We're gonna do a pastrami, and we're gonna do it on the Kevery H1. I'm gonna show you how to use that with the smoke controller, uh, ceramic plates that I bought separate, and we're gonna show you how we can smoke something low and slow. I'll be right back. Smoking, grilling. All right, guys, so like I said, we're going to do a pastrami today. And um, a couple videos back, a few videos back, I did some beef bacon with the uh, beef belly. And I actually did a beef bacon and a pork bacon com uh, combo and showed you how I did them both. But I had another piece of that beef bake or beef navel, which is what that was made from the beef navel. And that's usually what Katz's use and what a lot of the old time delis in New York use to make their pastrami is beef navel, which is not the brisket. It's actually the actual navel part, the uh, stomach part, just like pork belly would be. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some pastrami out of that. I've already cured this. I'll leave a link below to the cure calculator that I used. I did a dry cure. Um, you can do a, both a dry cure or a wet cure, either one that you want. And that curing calculator down below will, uh, you can choose either a dry or a wet cure, whichever you want. So it goes by the weight of the meat and all that. So it gives you a very uh, exact uh, amount of regular kosher salt and your pink curing salt. So you make sure you do it right. So that's what I've done, guys. This has been about 10 or 11 days curing, and it's ready to go. So first thing I'm going to do is take this out and go ahead and wash off any of that curing salts and stuff that's on there. Then I'm going to put my pastrami rub on, which I've made. I'll put a link below, too, to the pastrami rub. Um, it's actually from AmazingRibs.com, a meathead. It's close to cats, closest to cats uh, pastrami rub. So that's what I have in here, already made it. And I'm going to monitor the temperature of this cook with the meat stick 4X. And this is the new one that has four points of temperature measure it, measurement, so it can give you an estimate of when it's going to be done. We're going to do a, we're going to cook it similar to like we would a brisket, okay? So we're going to cook it up until it gets about a 160 internal temperature. Then we're going to take it off and we're going to wrap it in aluminum foil until it gets up over just over 200 degrees. I am gonna use these, the smoke controller plates here from Kevery. These are something new that they started offering. They don't come with the Kevery H1. You can order them from their website separately. I said they just started making these, so they are a thick ceramic cordite or cordite uh, ceramic, similar to what a Kamado uh, would have, like a Big Green Egg or a Kamado Joe. Um, to control the smoke, um, actually control the heat instead of the heat going directly on the meat the whole entire time. It kind of acts as a barrier so we don't get a whole lot of direct heat from the flame to the meat. We get more of that indirect heat and smoke. So we're going to actually use some cherry wood to smoke today. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all washed up. I'll show you, you know, put some seasoning on it. Then we'll get the Kevery lit up and ready to go. I'll be back. All right, guys, before I get the fire going, I am going to put this pastrami rub on the uh, beef belly here just so I can let it sit in for a few minutes while that fire is getting up to temp. It's not really, uh, doesn't need to be um, brined in any way because it is cured, but I just want to kind of set it on there. Um, this is all kind of wet from the water from washing off the uh, curing salts and stuff. So I just want it to kind of adhere and set before I put it on the cooker. It's not going to take very long for the uh, get up to temp, so I'm going to give it a good uh, the char charcoal, a good light. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a nice liberal coat of this on here. There you go, guys. I'm going to put this uh, whole thing just like this with this rack in the. Uh, Kevery so that uh, <clears throat> I still get some smoke all the way around it 
and this will kind of catch some of a lot of this fat. This is a very fatty piece of meat, so it's going to have a lot of fat to it. It's going to, uh, so this is going to catch a lot of that fat, so I don't have to worry about it, you know, catching fire in the bottom of the pit or um, getting that those uh, smoke plates really, really dirty. Um, not that you don't you you have to. You can put it directly on if you want to directly on those grates. It's not going to hurt it, but this is to me. It's easier to clean, easier to manage. I don't get any temp spikes from a lot of this fat hitting the uh, fire itself. So that's it guys. Let me go get the uh, smoker up to speed and then I'll be right back. All right guys, so as you can see, um, got my charcoal basket out here. Uh, my ash pan here on the bottom. I still got a little bit of ash there from last time. And one of the good things about this cooker, just like the Kamado over here, it's very efficient, very well insulated. So when you shut it down, you close your vents and all your doors are closed, it's going to just snuff that fire out so you can reuse charcoal. So um, I barely used um, a quarter of a, a charcoal basket for the spatchcock chicken that I did last week. So. This should, this little bit of charcoal right here, should actually get us through this whole cook. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and light it on this side here where the uh, vent is for the bottom, just so that this is where the fire is actually gonna spread from over here all the way over there. It's gonna catch this wood, cherry wood on fire here. There we go, we're gonna close this up open up the vents all the way till it starts getting close to our um, target temperature of around 250. So right around 215 or so, I'll start turning those vents down. All right guys, just want to show you how I put the uh, plates down on the bottom there. I used that rack on the bottom to hold them in place, so they're gonna work out just fine. All right guys, my fire's getting up to temp here on the smoker, so on the H1. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my meat stick 4X. I've already got it set up. And we're going to go ahead and put it in in the deepest part. So you want it to be the, the thickest part of this. And I'm going to shove it right all the way down to the hilt. And what this is going to do, like I said, this is the 4X. So it's got four um, points of temperature measurement. And it's going to try to give us a prediction of when this is going to be done. Okay. So it's going to measure three points internally in the meat. And it's going to measure the ambient temperature of the cooker. So it's going to uh, go through a computer algorithm to, after usually it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to kind of calculate everything and give us a estimate of when this is going to be done. All right guys, so the smoke's rolling here. It's starting to, the temperature starting to rise on the onboard thermometer there. But I want to get this uh, pastrami in so I can start monitoring the temperature from the uh, meat stick 4X. Uh, that'll give me a little bit better uh, reading of what the temperature is right there at the cooking level. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Trump, the temp's gonna drop just a little bit. Again, so you can see the smoke rolling pretty good. I'm gonna take my whole sheet pan here, put it in. That's how much room's in there. And uh, there you go. We're going to put it right above those plates. Close this back up. Now the temp will start rising. And then I'll start monitoring it from the meat stick. Uh, just so that I have a better uh, idea of what the temperature is right by the uh, cooking uh, surface. All right, guys. I'll be back. All right, guys. So here's the app. You can see my internal temperature is at 49. The uh, pit temperature is starting to rise here. Uh, 108. So this is after, uh, it's right, almost right at the 160. And you can see that it's counting down to two seconds left. Good job. All right, guys, we hit the magic 160 degrees internal temp. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this out and get it wrapped. Let's take a really quick look. Look at that. Well, that's a pretty darn good bark, if I don't say so myself. Awesome looking. Got plenty of smoke to it. We're going to go ahead and wrap this in foil. I'll take you over to the table while we do that. And then we're going to put it back in. We're going to leave the meat stick 4X right where it is. I'll be back. All right, guys. So I got my foil 
already ready already. Just had that there to hold it down so it didn't blow around. Gonna move this over. Put this piece over there. All right, that's still pretty hot. So I'm gonna use my big old Traeger spatula here. And it helped me move this right there onto the foil. And we'll go ahead and just wrap it up as tight as we can get it. And it's going to braise in this foil. And it's going to tenderize a little bit more. Get nice and juicy, tender. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on. I don't need to put it back on the pan, so I'm just gonna put it back on just like this. And um, that's it. We're gonna put it right back in the smoker. It's gonna get up to hopefully around, you know, 202 or 205. And then we'll take it out and uh, cut a piece off and hopefully we'll have some decent pastrami. I'll be back guys. One last look at the app guys. You can tell it did a really good job. It's right at 207. Stayed at right 250. Good job. All right guys, it's done. Hey, it only took about five hours um, total. So it wasn't really a super long time. Got some, uh, some of that fat that's rendered out. I just let it sit here for about two or three minutes, kind of cool down, but that still got a lot of juice in here. So I'll probably make a mess trying to uh, get this out. But oh yeah, it's still got plenty of juice in there. I'm gonna go ahead and try not to have it spill out all over the place. Whew, still hot. will help yeah there we go try not to spill this out all over the place plenty of plenty of rendered fat there for sure so the beef belly is pretty fatty um, it's kind of like a pork belly so there's a lot of marbled or internal fat there's a layer of fat there that uh, Take my meat stick out. Meat stick 4X worked perfect. Um, one of the things I do like about the 4X is that it does try to recalculate whenever the temperature uh, changes. So it will uh, adjust the time that it thinks it's going to be done with uh, the changing temperatures. All right, guys, so here's what it looks like. There's my pastrami from that piece of pork or beef belly. Whew. It's got a, definitely got a nice bark to it. I'm going to try to cut it on this side here. Oh, look at that fat. Oh, yeah, look at that. It rendered a bunch of fat, but there's still some in there. It's going to cut a lot easier when it's... Uh, cooled down some. Well, look at that fat layer that was in between two hunks of meat. That's still pretty hot. Check it out guys. I'm going to go ahead and take a bite of it even though it's still pretty hot. Wow. Well, there you have it. Pastrami from Beef Belly. Mm. That rub is delicious. Finished on the Kevery H1. Mm. Thanks for watching, guys. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Check out the Fire and Water Cooking Seasonings and Sauces on Amazon and Walmart.com and my website. 
I'll see you again on the next fire and water cooking video. Check out the Kevry H1 on Amazon as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Get back to cutting this up.